Welcome to the commentary part of this video where I talk about details about this song for far too long. Well, great. Um, so let's get started. All the samples in this song I use straight from the sample pack provided by Lip Hop, and we have, and we're gonna go over them. Uh, so first of all, I used some click samples, some uh, Einbach texture samples, and. Uh, this can be heard in the click one and click two tracks. Here, they're not really processed. They're just clicks to be clicks. And uh, yeah. next up, we have this riser. It's based off of this sample. A little bit of reverb applied to it. Uh, that's the little riser that happens every so often, a bit of a build up. Okay, great. Now for the bass sound, um, might be a little, a little bending the rules. Uh, hopefully it's not. Um, the rules specifically talking about single cycle sampling. Uh, as you can see, this is clearly not single cycle because there are multiple cycles. For any of cycles, but um, no, I took a, I took the uh, this one, the Godfather intensifies texture sample, and I, I took a little bit from the start, and then a little bit of a crossfade. That's which has this nice uh, bass sound. I'm quite, I'm quite picky about my basses, so I felt like um, couldn't really change it from here. I hope it's okay. It might be a bit borderline, so apologies. Next up, we have this. Um, we have a collection of the kind of 40 voicey quasar samples. So I, I use them from the start here for the little like chord clip. Yep, perfect. Uh, this is um, pretty much the same sample, but. Uh, made it into mono by taking the left and right channels and then layer them, layering them together into one, one instrument. Because for the, well, I know the whole point of the Quasar module was to add the kind of stereo expansion stuff, but uh, for at least for the main, main kind of chord loop, I wanted it to be mainly in mono. Um, so that it's a little bit more um, direct, you know, just for mixing reasons. So this is uh, again just a normal one, normal sample. Um, yep, that's normal. And then this one this sounds a bit special. I added uh, a phrase here, so uh, Renoise allows you to add phrases, which. Are kind of like sequencers that are attached to instruments. So uh, what this does is uh, I, I added some hits here, some C4 hits, which is pretty much the kind of bass note they can use because um, when you play a phrase you can uh, transpose it based off of your bass note. So yeah, but for this sample I do pretty much just use uh, the root note of the of the sample, uh, and then I use some of these effects. This is the um, this is the S effect, which allows you to go to different points of the sample. Uh, what this does is goes here to different points of the sample. It kind of like chops it up in random places. Oh, well, it's actually set set places, but uh, I put in these numbers randomly, pretty much just mashed them from the keyboard, is uh, typical. And um, I have this volume envelope, so it's very, uh, kind of a very short snippet of that sample. Um, and then the same for this one, I also have another uh, phrase here. So this is pretty much the same concept. I use a little bit of these R, R effects, these are retrick. So, and the O3 here is like the number of number of ticks that um, 
the sample is re-triggered by the same force one at the end, and this B effect is to make the sample go backward, just for a little bit more variation, I suppose. This sample... Yes, yeah, so this sample is from... This is probably my favorite sample. Um, it's from the, the kind of vocal drum loop, also from the Quasar module. But it's it's very filtered down, and uh, I really really like the sound of this one. So uh, I used it a lot. Um, just kind of this really interesting, noisy kind of um, sample of a lot of texture, and the kicks. Oh, the the kicks are really nice as well. So I uh, I very much like the sample. I used it quite a lot, especially later on the track. It's in this one. This track called uh, Kick Loop. Uh, yeah, I use it quite a lot. <laughs> and um, there's another bit of variation because when I, when I eventually wanted to add in this sample with some of the other samples that I was using, like the bass sample and the initial chord kind of loop sample, um, th this kind of bass sound, this one specifically, it was interfering a little bit, it wasn't kind of working together with the kind of scale and structure and stuff, so I uh, I edited uh, this sample using the, the draw tool. You can actually draw samples and voice. Pretty, pretty useful sometimes, so all I did is I, um, I just have the kicks and then for the bass sounds I just removed them using the Using the draw tool first, probably a better way of doing it. I just, I, yeah, but it works. And there's a bit of a click here, which I personally don't mind. You you could fade it out. Um, yeah, you you could select this and then fade to remove that click. But I I like some clicks, so I kept it in. Um, here's another sample. Uh, from yeah, another <laughs> phase or one I'm using by Lovos. And again, this is another phrase one. This one's a bit simpler, it's just eighth notes. And then we have a kick. Simple kick that I took from the portal drum kit. And some more drum single hits. So from the mod mod 606. Uh, here's one of the zap. Um, plankton samples and uh, yeah, I think this for, this one's from the 606. This one's from the Bukla, I think. Yeah, so that'll do it for all the samples. Now for the tracks, um, here's the main kind of chord loop, very simple. Um, it's just yeah, B, F, G sharp. And at the end I have um, harp again, but this one has a backwards effect, so it goes backwards. And this effect here um, enables this gate. So uh, what happens is that the gate is off for these three notes, and then for this note... Yeah, you can hear there's a little bit kind of like a jittery, jitteriness to it. So, um, what I did for that? Uh, this is just a simple kick, kick track, um, space clave track. It uh, was claves from the mod 606, and I added this uh, delay, which is a synced mute 2 and 4 delay, um, with the source muted. So it's just a delay, it's just kind of like a ping pong between two different, between the two stereo channels. The riser, which we talked about, here's the bass. It's actually tuned to G by accident, but um, <laughs> it works. Uh, we have vocal, this is the vocal chop. There's this sample, and I'm using some of these effects. Um, this one, I think... Yeah, so uh, these effects turn this comb filter on and off. So a comb filter is um, like a special type of delay 
kind of really, really short delay, and the note that you choose here di dictates kind of like how short the delay is. So the higher you go, it's like really, really short. It makes some makes for some really cool uh, effects. I use this um, I use this quite a lot, but this one, uh, the note is very, 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 very low. I think it's at the very lowest uh, C zero. So that gives it a little bit of a kind of short-ish delay. That's, so that that's the thing that makes it kind of go the 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 kind of the kind of chop there. This is just a simple snare track and, and hi hat. And for the and to vary the hi hat a little bit, I just added a delay here, um, another short delay. This is just the initial one that loads up when you load in the default uh, delay effect. So it turns on and off the delay every so often. And later on in the track, uh, the kick clip is introduced. So it just goes, goes from C to A sharp. We have so this this sample. And this sample has quite a lot of modulation. Uh, so first of all, um, we have this instrument macro. What instruments mac macros do is they allow you to set specific modulations that are available from the effects um, effects column in each track. So for here, if, well, I'm on the wrong sample. Sample eleven. Go to sample eleven. This one. You go to modulation, and here are the macros. So I have this macro called decay. And what this macro does is, um, is it changes this parameter, it makes the volume decay higher and lower, which is also this effect, this 11 effect, this changes this decay parameter. You can see here. That adds a little bit of variation. Uh, another thing that adds variation is I have this lo-fi mat effect. What this does is it um, changes the sample rate of the sample or um, changes the amount of bits that is represented or represents the sample. So it kind of has it's, um, basically for lo-fi kind of sounds. Uh, I enable it here with the 20, 2001 effect. And 20 effect is off, and then finally I have a little bit of a reverb that turns on off. This is 40 effect. 401 turns on, 40 off. So it's yeah, quite a lot of modulation going on here. Um, next, we kind of get introduced. So we have this track, the plonk track. Uh, which is again also quite similar to the vocal chop to track. We have a lo fi mat which is being modulated and also a reverb that's getting turned on and off. Yeah, pretty cool. By the way, one thing I didn't explain again is this um, kind of track view. What this allows me to do is uh, duplicate uh, tracks and turn some parts of the song on and off. So um you know it's it's useful basically just as a as a really quick way of getting some variation later on the track. You can just like okay I can turn this on, turn this off. And that that's how I build up these tracks. I could I could uh, remove these, it's not very important, but we also double up as note off messages, so I do like to keep them in those cases. <laughs> And again, and then cover riser. Yeah. And then the vocal loop, the initial loop is being introduced again. And this is when I transition to uh, the kick loop, is the kind of top top one without the bass, because otherwise it'll clash a bit, little bit with this with this bass that I also want to use here. 
I do, I do realize that I'm layering two cakes together. But maybe I shouldn't have done that, but it's too late to change that now. Um, so here we, I think, oh, this one. We change, yeah, we change the kick clip here. Just, just some more. This idea I came up with and then continued expanding. So later on, we have two more uh, things that are introduced. We get this melodic tom, this farmer song. Then it's got a bit of a lo-fi mat. This one's not being changed. It's just kind of static. So this is the um, six or six tom sound or clave clave sound. Um, I'm not quite sure if we're kind of similar. Yeah, so it's basically just that played melodically. Just just adds a little bit more to it, a little bit more of a build up, I suppose. And we also have this hit. This is from the Bukla synth. Uh, we have modulation here, so that makes it like a very short kind of snap. And later on in the track, we have this this part. And how I achieved that was um, by using a grip. So I put all of these, and most, most of the tracks are in this mute grip. And then I have um, one track that isn't, this one I just made. So um, th this full vocal loop track is in it, it's, it's on its own. So what I can do here is these effects here. What we do is they modulate this volume. Um, so if, uh, you can probably see here. Yeah, so it goes from 0 dB to minus infinity. So I, ha I can play pretty much the entire song and then stop the song for a while to play this this um, this sample, which has a little bit of de delay on it. Maximizer to get a little bit louder. Then I can turn off the sample here with an off command. Then same thing happens here, but I, I'll let the I'll let the sample um, go for the rest of this pattern. If that's for this section, and then later on, it's pretty much um, the same, except um, this this chord texture loop. It's slightly different from the one that's at the start because um, this one, if I go into the sample view, right here, waveform view, so it starts from the start of the sample, but um, in this part, what I do is I have it later on. So it starts from here, at a quieter kind of uh, part of the sample, maybe more filtered part of the sample. Um, so, so in that way I can make um, this slip return to some extent, but also, um, you know, quiet down, because it, it's, um, you know, versus the build up, this is kind of the wind down at the end. This is again the chopped kick clip. Uh, I removed, this is also the same plonk that we used before, except uh, I removed some of the notes up here and some notes here. And then it, then it winds down from there. Pretty much how the song goes. Um, yeah, one thing I did mention actually is a master. I have some master effects going. Um, it's over here, whereas I um over at this point I introduced some comb filter modulation. Yeah, so if you if you heard that da -da 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 kind of stutter, that's that's what 
uh, this is causing this. It's cool. Sorry. And it's slightly, actually, the note is slightly higher here, so it's a little bit of a short delay, a little bit. And later on in the track, I have this modulation here. Um, so it adds a little bit of that lo fi mat effect, which I <laughs> use probably too much. Um, and what this does is um, instead of full wet lo fi mat, this is kind of only slightly. Uh, slightly wet, and then what I do here is you see the rate here is changing. So I do that is alpha here, which is a meta effect. It goes to the lo-fi mats rate, and it's just fifty percent amplitude, sixty-four steps when it resets. So again, just a little bit more variation. And um, just as a final mention, all of the effects I've used here in the song were all available uh, for all the um, built-in native effects in Renoise. I haven't used any plugins uh, at all. No, no free plugins, no paid plugins, just, just the native effects of Renoise, which the vast majority of the time is plenty good enough for me. Is I don't really use any plugins um, in any of uh, my, my kind of software or workflows. So you might do have some. Uh, so yeah, uh, this project is really available for anyone to open up, and it should just work. The XRNS file format it contains all of the samples inside of the file. And even if you don't own Renoise, what you can do is you can go to the Renoise website, you can download the demo version of Renoise, which is basically just like the full version of Renoise, except it doesn't have, it, it doesn't export to WAVE, so you can't do any full song exports, and um, you also cannot render plugins to samples, which, I mean, I don't use anyway, but just saying that's, that's another limitation, but um, it's basically free, um, but uh, um, I'm I'm using the full full version because I use Renoise quite a lot. It's um, a very powerful software, and I didn't I didn't clear up initially because I was supposed to introduce um, what this program is. But yes, this is Renoise. It's a DAW uh, like any other DAW except with one huge difference, and it's uh, except. Which is uh, instead of using a piano roll, like pretty much every single DAW does, um, it uses a tracker interface. And as someone who has started out making music in tracker formats years ago, has always used um, trackers of different different types. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this track. Thank you, Lipop, for the competition, and good luck to all the contestants.